Hello and welcome to El Expo and the new Premier League season is upon us. It feels like only five minutes since Man City were lifting the title and Leicester were bottling another top four finish. But here we are on Friday night the new season kicks off with Brentford vs Arsenal. But how will this season go? Well before I give you my own proper predictions, I'm going to let FM have a go. So via a database from FM Scout, I've got all the right transfers, all the right teams in the right divisions and I'm all set to simulate the new Premier League season. There's a few transfers that were completed after the database was made so I've added them in, plus a few other deals which are pretty much certain to be completed as well. But let's do it, my name's James and this is the 2021-22 Premier League season according to Football Manager 2021. Let's go. Okay, here we are at the start of the simulation. Ignore the fact it says the 27th of July 2020. As you can see, we have got the proper teams for the 2021 season. Here is Brentford making their Premier League debut. And we've also got a returning Norwich City and a returning Watford. We've also got all the new signs as well. Just, just for clarity, we'll look at Man City. We can see Jack Grealish is there. There he is, having a grand old time. Pleased to have joined Man City. We've also done a couple of deals which are basically going to be done. I mean, it might have happened by the time this video goes up. Look at Chelsea. We have got Romelu Lukaku. He is back at the bridge for a second spell. Obviously, this deal hasn't gone through in reality, but it's almost certainly going to. Tammy Abraham's still there. I didn't have time to put him to Roman. By the time I'd done this simulation, the deal had been offered, been accepted, I think. Might be going to Roma for 34 million. Chelsea going to be without him. One transfer I haven't touched is Harry Kane. Tottenham have still got their main man, their vice captain, Harry Kane. At the minute, doesn't look like he's going anywhere. He is still at Tottenham. Any early predictions for the FM simulation? It, it's always between Man City and Liverpool, isn't it? So it, it's hard to look elsewhere. As for the relegation places, I mean, Watford are normally good for a relegation, aren't they? I tell you what, rather than just simulating all the way to the end of the season, I'm going to do this in stages. So I'm going to go until New Year's Eve. We'll be about halfway through the season, the 31st of December. We'll see how things are going by then. Obviously, I've disabled transfers so that there can't be any more deals. The squads, as they are now in reality, are what they are in this simulation. There's not going to be any random transfers of Isaac Hayden to Palace or Richarlison to Tottenham. Nothing daft. These are the squads in reality. These are the ones we're going to simulate with. So let's go until December. We'll be about halfway through the season. Let's see how things have started in the new Premier League season. Okay, here we are on the 35th of December. The majority of Premier League teams have played 16 games. We're nearly halfway through the new season. And unsurprisingly, it is Manchester City leading the way. After 16 games, they are unbeaten. 42 points on the board. 8 clear of Manchester United. In second, it looks like Man City are going to absolutely walk the title once again. They haven't really got a nearest challenger. Man United, Leicester and Arsenal all very close for second place. Only two points between them. I mean, that's quite surprising that Arsenal are doing so well. 32 points. 10 behind Man City. But for them to be in top four contention, pretty good considering how things ended last season for them. A few surprises. Liverpool down in sixth. Six points shy of the top four, which is pretty poor. Norwich massively overperforming in eighth. I mean, I'd have them down as relegation contenders, but here, they're pushing for Europe. Bad news for Chelsea and Tottenham, though. Despite all the money invested by Chelsea, they are ninth. I mean, is Romelu Lukaku doing anything? Have a little look. He's doing his bit. 12 goals already for the Blues. As for Tottenham, even with Harry Kane... They're just nowhere near with Nuno Espirito Santo. It's going absolutely terribly. Harry Kane, average rating of an 8.02, despite only scoring five Premier League goals. Elsewhere in the table, Newcastle massively overachieving in 11th. In the relegation places, we've got Brentford rock bottom. They've only won two games so far. So have Watford and so have Aston Villa. Aston Villa really suffering with the loss of Jack Grealish. They're in 11 points. Three adrift of Crystal Palace in 17th. Leeds not doing too well and neither are West Ham. In terms of goals, it's been led by Bernardo Silva and Chris Wood. They've both got nine goals. Unsurprising, Chris Wood up there. I mean, the man's... He's FM royalty, isn't he? Bernardo Silva, quite a surprising one. Maybe he's the main man up front now with Sergio Aguero gone and no Harry Kane signing. Elsewhere, Callum Wilson doing well. So is Adam Armstrong. New signing at Southampton. Looks like that deal's going to happen. 
Danny Ings doing all right at Aston Villa, the man who's replaced Jack Grealish effectively. Well, they've used the money to spend on him. Are the Villa signings doing anything decent? I mean, they've made some good signings. Leon Bay going okay, got three assists. Tunzebi's doing okay. So is Buendia. He's got himself five goals. So maybe it's elsewhere that uh, Villa are letting themselves down. But they are in a relegation battle after losing Jack Grealish. As for Grealish at Manchester City, how is he getting on? Let's have a little look. He's started nine games, two goals, average rating of 7.17. So it's okay. He's, he's alongside John Stones, Kyle Walker. He's doing better than Phil Foden, which is quite surprising. But Manchester City, unsurprisingly, the best team in the Premier League. We've already had some manager changes. Well, one, Bruno Lage, or Lage, whatever you want to call him, the Wolves manager sacked for a poor league position, a relative newcomer, quite a surprising appointment by Wolves. And even though they are 13th with 19 points on the board, they've sacked the new manager. Quite surprising, really, considering the man they replaced him, Nuno, is only four points ahead of them. But after 16 games, that is where the land lies. But what I'm going to do now is I'm going to simulate until the end of the January transfer window. I'm going to see if there's going to be any transfers that could change the course of this Premier League season. Can anyone stop Manchester City? It doesn't look like it. Let's go to February 2nd. Okay, here we are on the 2nd of February 2021. Majority of Premier League teams have played 21 times. A couple of them have only played 20. But still, Man City are dominating and they are still unbeaten. After 21 games... They are still on course for an invincible season. They're 10 points clear of Manchester United. Arsenal and Leicester dropped off slightly. Five points shy of Man United now. Liverpool up in fifth. Chelsea recovered their sixth. Tottenham still strolling though. Down in ninth. And the relegation places remain the same. Brentford, Watford and Aston Villa. Surprisingly, Leeds are massively struggling. They're in a relegation battle despite finishing the top 10. Last season, let's have a look if there have been any more manager changes. David Moyes sacked by West Ham. As for Wolves, they've replaced Bruno Lage with Pachetta, which is great. Sounds a bit like Pancetta, nice on a carbonara. But what about the transfers? What has happened in the January window? Has there been any big moves? These are the January transfer signings. Let's have a little look, see what's gone on. Man United have got rid of Phil Jones. Eddie and Ketty has gone to Newcastle. They've also loaned out Sean Longstaff. Takamina Mino has been loaned out. Big sign at Tottenham. They've bought Sima Vesalko. Croatian right back. Don't really think that's going to change much, but it's a big sign and nonetheless. Tottenham have also brought in a striker, Loren, from Real Betis. The new number nine at Spurs hasn't made his debut yet. I wonder if that's changed the, the, the situation with Harry Kane. We'll sharp find out. Chelsea brought in Davide Calabria, Italian right back. Another big signing for Chelsea, £27.5 million. Pounds. Weirdly, Liverpool have loaned out Ibrahim Akinate despite only signing him the summer. Sevilla getting a swoop of Premier League loanees. Tammy Abraham, Ibrahim Akinate and Yangel Herrera. Alfredo Morello signed by Manchester City. That would suggest they've got no need for Harry Kane. What an odd signing. £23 million. I mean, I like Morello, but I don't know if his Manchester City levels are good. Liverpool have loaned out Curtis Jones to Brentford. Could give them a little lift in their race for survival. West Ham have got Burton Triore on loan and Ashley Young already sold by Aston Villa. This comeback hasn't gone quite to plan. Chelsea, another big sign in Teddy for £38.5 million. A lot of money being spent in this January window. Man City getting Christian Pavon from Boca Juniors, a great little player. And Liverpool have got Gabriel Barbosa, Brazilian striker, I mean, legendary in terms of FM for 18.5 million pounds. I can't believe how much money's been spent in this January window. I mean, you can see scrolling down the size of some of these transfers. Matt Ritchie's been sold. Caleb Ekyaban got to Everton for 16 million quid. Not a great sign by Rafa Benitez, but, but it's one he's made. So that's, that's not really very good. Philip Billing has gone to Crystal Palace. Vincent Janssen signed by Newcastle. That's a terrible signing. Already he's made his debut and he was rubbish. 6.1, that's appalling. Fabian, the Spanish centre midfielder, signed by Manchester United, potentially rising to 78 million quid. That's a massive signing by Man United. And he started Old Trafford, has gone brilliantly. Man United the closest to challenging Man City. Perhaps Fabian can take them even closer. Luis Felipe signed by Liverpool, another centre-back. It's no wonder they've loaned out 
Ibrahim Kanate, things obviously not going well for him. Malenkovic signed by Chelsea. Why have Chelsea spent so much money? They've also signed Odson Edouard from Celtic. Man City spending 45 million there on Benatza from Milan. Apologies if I said that wrong. I feel like I did. I feel like that might be the end of the big signings. Arsenal getting Loftus Cheek and Marcus Alonso. And that seems to be about it. After that, we're going into the, the summer transfer windows. So some very, very big signings. Could they change the, the course of the Premier League title? I don't know. It might change things down at the bottom. Brentford getting Curtis Jones could be a big one. But Chelsea, the big spenders. And they are still seven points shy of Champions League football. I mean, they should be challenging for the title with all their signings. And it, it's just not happening. Thomas Tuchel... To be honest, by the end of this season, I don't think he'll still be in the job. But what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go into mid-April. By then, we'll be into the running. We'll be able to see who's really in the relegation battle, who is really challenging for the title. I mean, it's, it's going to be Manchester City. But let's do it. Let's go into mid-April. Let's see where the land lies with not many games left. Okay, here we are on the 15th of April, 2021. Each team's got between eight and six games left. And suddenly, we've got a title race on our hands. Man City have, I mean, they've only lost one game. And Man United have somehow got level on points. 77 points each. Man City have got a game in hand. But we've definitely got a title race on our hands. Arsenal dropped out of the top four. Liverpool up into third. Wolves, with their new manager, Pachetta, up into seventh. Tottenham still struggling down in tenth. In the relegation places, Leeds have dropped in. It looks like Watford and Brentford are dead to rights. So for the last place, it looks like it's between Burnley, Crystal Palace, Aston Villa and Leeds. A Brighton out of the woods, eight points clear, they're probably all right. I mean, they're four sizable teams. If Burnley probably will be in the relegation battle. Crystal Palace, we don't really know how Vieira is going to get on. Villa and Leeds, they should be nowhere near the relegation battle. But at the minute, they're the two favourites to be going down. Well, only one of them would go down. Elsewhere, it looks like West Ham have somewhat recovered. In terms of the golden boot, Bernardo Silva still leading the way with 17, alongside Chris Wood and Dominic Calvert-Lewin. Raul Jimenez getting himself 14 goals. You'll love to see it on the back of that horrific head injury. He's getting back at it. Romelu Lukaku still playing well, 15 goals. I'm going to have a look at Manchester United because obviously they have somehow clawed back this title race. And I want to see how their new signings are getting on. Rafael Varane doing brilliantly so is Jaden Sancho Fabian the January rival he's playing well as well Bruno Fernandes what a season he's having 19 goals and 20 assists so far it's no wonder Man United are back in title contention so with about seven games on average in total to go there is a title race on it is between Man United and Manchester City to see who are crowned the Premier League champions the relegation race is still hot as well as are the battle for Europe. I mean, Everton have dropped off. Tottenham are nowhere near. The Southampton can still get in. They're only a point behind Wolves. Champions League. I think it'll probably be the top four we've got there. It's a seven-point gap for Chelsea. But, I mean, they have got a game in hand. Arsenal, I can't see them getting back in. But they're doing better than they were last season. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to simulate until the end of the season and see who wins this Battle of Manchester. And will it be Leeds or Aston Villa who go down? Huge clubs. Let's see what happens. Okay, here we are at the end of the season. And astonishingly, Manchester City have bottled it. They have thrown away a 10-point lead. And Manchester United are Premier League champions for the first time since Sir Alex Ferguson left. Ole Gunnar Solskjaer has guided the Red Devils to the Premier League title. They finished one point ahead of Manchester City. They got 93 points winning the title on the final day. Man City were held to a 2-2 draw by Leicester City, allowing Manchester United, who smashed Leeds 3-0, giving them the title and also sending Leeds down. The atmosphere inside Old Trafford would have been incredible. Man United Premier League champions sending their rivals Leeds back down to the championship. What a day that'll have been inside Manchester United. Inside Manchester United, inside Old Trafford, at Manchester United. It was Man City's title to lose. They had their name basically on the trophy. And they've thrown it away at the death. Similar to what Man United did a few years ago with the Aguero goal. This one was less dramatic. Man United coursing it to a 3-0 win against Leeds. And they are Premier League champions. Elsewhere in the top four, Leicester 
they've bottled it again, man. They've came fifth. Chelsea, a late surge to come fourth with 76 points, jumping above Leicester and finishing fourth. Liverpool coming third. Elsewhere, Arsenal getting sixth, getting European football back. And Southampton coming seventh to get a Europa Conference League place. An appalling season from Tottenham. Tenth with 51 points. I mean, Christ, Harry Kane, one of the best players in the league. It appears he's been a one-man band once again. Surprisingly, Newcastle doing so well, coming 11th, 45 points. Norwich surviving, doing very well with 45 points as well. Aston Villa, they have stayed up on the last day. A 2-2 draw with Southampton was enough to move them a point clear of Leeds, who, as we say, lost on the final day, meaning going down at the championship is Leeds, Brentford and Watford. I'll be honest, I can't say that happened in reality. I could say Watford going down, Brentford possibly, but Leeds, absolutely no way. Burnley, they finished three points clear of the relegation zone, so that, those teams fighting relegation stayed about the same, Burnley, Palace, Villa and Leeds. And sadly for Marcelo Bielsa's boys, it's them who are going down. Everton and Rafa Benitez, ninth to top off finish, not bad, but nowhere really near European football. I think that's about it. Bernardo Silva winning the Golden Boot with 24 goals. And your friend and mine, Chris Wood, getting himself a very tidy 20. Let's have a look at the manager changes, see what's happened. Dean Smith got the sack at Aston Villa. So it was Eddie Howe who ended up keeping them up. Watford sacked Zisco and brought in Yandal Thomason. Couldn't keep them up. Marcelo Bielsa got the sack. Vladimir Petkovic couldn't keep them up. Uh, David Moyes was replaced by Abelardo. Elsewhere... Obviously, Nuno's been sacked at the end of the season. Benitez sacked. And Mikel Arteta sacked. Despite the fact Arsenal finished 6th, much better than last season, they have still sacked Mikel Arteta. But it is Manchester United who incredibly are Premier League champions. Manchester City have thrown away the title. It is Man United who are Premier League champions. Bruno Fernandes, the star, 22 goals, 23 assists. Varane, a huge season. Jadon Sancho a huge season. Unlike the experiment we did a couple of weeks ago, the new signings have propelled Manchester United to Premier League glory. They are the Premier League champions. I am absolutely shocked. Will this happen? Christ, if the season's as dramatic as this, we're in for one hell of a ride. We will leave it there. Let me know what you think down in the comments below. As always, don't forget to like, share and subscribe to Alexpo. And until next time, we will see you around.